In other words, Democrats are using fear and division to mask what has been a terrible four years under Biden. I repeat, they cannot run on are you better off than you are four years ago. This is all they have left. Now, Democrats can't argue, right, this year that Americans are better off than they were three years ago because they're not. And the classic question in any election is are you better off now than you were four years ago? If you're one of those people, even on the left, who isn't that concerned by the prospect of a Trump second term, that it won't be that bad, that we survived Trump the first time round, then this next segment is for you. Here's how his first 100 days could very well turn out. Trump begins his dictatorship. Yes, dictatorship. Not my words, his. Our new self-proclaimed dictator ends the constitutional guarantee of birthright citizenship for any baby born in the United States. Just a wannabe dictator surrounded by authoritarian sycophants on an anti-democratic mission of vengeance, cruelty, and persecution. Oh, that's gonna hurt! If you're looking for an example of why independent media is crucial in today's day and age, this is it. On his new show, Medi Unfiltered, the former MSNBC host has immediately got to work on his new platform, sharing insight on such things as the media bias when reporting on Israel-Palestine. And yet these are not words that tend to be used by Western media outlets, in particular by American mainstream media, to describe what is happening in Gaza to the Palestinians as they are killed in record numbers. For pivoting to a much needed segment that if I had my way would be blasted across every network in the United States, as well as being used for an ad for President Biden. Now, I know what the critics will say. Man, these things can't possibly get that bad. This is alarmist hyperbole. But those critics said the same thing at the start of Trump's first term in 2017, a term that ended in almost half a million COVID deaths, many of them preventable a 6-3 conservative Supreme Court that would go on to gut abortion rights and affirmative action, and of course, an armed insurrection at the Capitol. And that was with all the adults in the room and the guardrails and the checks and balances. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. If there's one thing that grinds my gears regarding coverage of the former president is complacency. The idea that just because he's lied so many times that we just become numb to it and even worse, engage in both sidism regarding both candidates until November comes around. And as Mehdi Hassan points out, this is a wildly dangerous approach. We must never forget what four years of Trump caused and the ripple effects that we are still seeing today. See Arizona for the most draconian of aftershocks. But understand that with that record as a gauge, how catastrophic another term would be. And I need you to picture the scene. It's January 20th, 2025, inauguration day. You turn on the TV and Donald J. Trump with his hand on his own 59.99 God bless the USA Bible is being sworn in as 47th president of the United States. Now, the quadruple indicted new president makes his way back to the Oval Office and begins to make America great again, again. And based on Team Trump's own words, own proud promises, here's how his first 100 days could very well turn out. Let's go. Day one, Trump begins his dictatorship. Yes, dictatorship, not my words, his. Plus, you're not gonna be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border and we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. But, that, but Trump doesn't stop there with the border closing and the drilling. Our new self-proclaimed dictator ends the constitutional guarantee of birthright citizenship for any baby born in the United States. There are, of course, protests, like in 2017, but this time, in 2025, in true dictator fashion, Trump invokes the Insurrection Act to put the military on the streets and violently crack down on those protests. He says, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the leg. <sighs> okay, well, we can survive Trump's only one day as a dictator, right? Not quite. Day two. Trump moves to pardon and release the January 6th insurrectionists, serving time in prison for violently storming the US Capitol four years ago. We look very, very seriously at full pardons, and I mean full pardons with an apology just to many. Day five. Trump reintroduces his Schedule F executive order and this time fires 50,000 federal government employees, replacing them all with MAGA loyalists. Day seven. 
Trump's new White House press secretary, the unhinged Islamophobe and conspiracy theorist Laura Loomer, announces that the president is nominating her fellow conspiracy theorist, General Michael Flynn, to be defense secretary. Yes, the General Michael Flynn, who called for martial law in 2020. Day 15. Trump instructs his brand new attorney general, Mike Davis, to fire special prosecutor Jack Smith and throw out all the federal cases against him. And then instead launch spurious investigations into Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and yes, Hillary Clinton. Day 21. Trump calls for General Mark Milley's prosecution and execution. Day 29. Trump's newly confirmed CIA director, Kash Patel, announces we will go out and find the conspirators, not just in government, but in the media. Yes, we're going to come after the people in the media who lied about American citizens, who helped Joe Biden rig presidential elections. We're going to come after you. Oh, and guess what? They start off with yours truly. Day 33. New AG Davis indicts, detains, and tries to deport me and others. Day 39. The travel ban is coming back even bigger than before and much stronger than before. Sorry, Palestinian refugees fleeing war and genocide in Gaza. The Muslim ban is back and it now includes you too. Oh, and any foreign student supporters of yours in the United States. Day 41. We will revoke the student visas of radical anti-American and anti-Semitic foreigners at our colleges and universities. And Day 45. The president orders authorities to build massive detention camps and raid cities nationwide. Carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. The president's top advisor on immigration, Stephen Miller, explains how it'll be done. You go to the red state governors and you say, give us your National Guard. We will deputize them as immigration enforcement officers. And if you're going to go, into an unfriendly state like Maryland, well, there would just be Virginia doing the arrest in Maryland, right? Very close, very nearby. Day 49. Trump orders the thousands of troops deployed to the border to shoot migrants in the legs. Day 53. Trump vows to finish his wall, not paid for by Mexico, and fortify that border with moats filled with alligators. Day 61. Anti-war president Donald Trump attacks Mexico. Day 71. Trump threatens to defund law enforcement agencies that don't restore racist policies like stop and frisk. Day 79. Trump moves to indemnify police forces across the country and give them the power to kill shoplifters. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Day 85. At the urging of Stephen Miller, Trump's DOJ redefines the remit of the Civil Rights Act of the 1960s, this time to focus only on anti-white racism. White nationalists hold rallies in support of the move. Day 90. Trump uses executive action to block trans adults from using Medicaid for treatments that their doctors have deemed crucial for their health. Day 93. Trump administration officials remove the words abortion and reproductive health from every federal document. Day 97. Trump says he's pulling the US out of the Paris Climate Change Agreement and rolling back the Biden administration's climate initiatives. And that brings us to day 100, as Trump begins laying out the red carpet at the White House for a whole host of his foreign buddies, Vladimir Putin, Kim Jong-un, Benjamin Netanyahu, Saudi Crown Prince MBS, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Hungarian leader Viktor Orban, and he sings their praises. There's nobody that's better, smarter, or a better leader than Viktor Orban. He's a non-controversial figure because he said this is the way it's going to be and that's the end of it, right? He's the boss, and now he's a great leader. This is the way it's going to be, and that's the end of it. Now, I know what the critics are saying. Man, these things can't possibly get that bad. This is alarmist hyperbole. But those critics said the same thing at the start of Trump's first term in 2017, a term that ended in almost half a million COVID deaths, many of them preventable. A 6-3 conservative Supreme Court that would go on to gut abortion rights and affirmative action. And of course, an armed insurrection at the Capitol. 
And that was with all the adults in the room and the guardrails and the checks and balances. There'll be none of those next time round. Just a wannabe dictator surrounded by authoritarian sycophants on an anti-democratic mission of vengeance, cruelty and persecution. Don't say you weren't warned.